On the streets of Lisbon, campaigning is frenetic. On Sunday, the Portuguese head to the polls in a snap general election. The current Prime Minister, Antonio Costa, isn't standing. Corruption allegations are dominating the campaign, as political science lecturer Isabel David explains. In today's class, she reminds her students of the reason for this early election. And now, let's take a closer look at the corruption cases in Portugal, and in particular, at the suspicions surrounding Antonio Costa. How do you, as young people, see things? We just need to uh, find the corruption and just punish the, the people that practice that, that corruption. That is uh, extremely important for us to give our votes and to uh, contribute uh, for what we really are, are looking for in a democracy. President Marcelo Rebelo de Souza called the election in November after the surprise resignation of Costa, prime minister since 2015. Costa denied any wrongdoing but said he couldn't stay due to suspicions raised by prosecutors investigating corruption and influence peddling in lithium concessions. The scandal has caused a loss of trust among people who voted for him. It's a huge problem for the Socialist Party, and that's clear from the opinion polls. These corruption cases have shaken the government. Portugal's Socialist Party has a new leader. At 46, Pedro Nuno Santos is hoping to keep his party in government. This evening in Santa Ram, an hour away from Lisbon, he delivers one of his last calls to rally supporters. They want to cut pensions, to roll back abortion rights and women's rights, and they want us to shut up about it. That speech enthuses this supporter. He's a great politician who knows what he wants to do, and we want him to be elected because if the right gets in, they're going to destroy what the socialists have built. Despite various scandals, the polls still give the socialists 30% of votes, neck and neck with the centre-right democratic alliance led by the Social Democratic Party. But many voters aren't impressed with Costa's successor. It's because he's not heavyweight enough. It's true that he's too lightweight. He was a minister and he didn't do anything. And now he says he's going to change things. No wonder he doesn't convince voters. Jorge has supported Chega, the far-right party, since it was created in 2019. I've had this membership card since the beginning. I'm activist number 10,965, and I'm very proud to have this. Led by André Ventura, Chega has taken less than five years to become the third largest political group in Portugal. The party's deputy, Pedro Pensana, tells us he wants to overhaul the country. Clean Portugal of corruption, create a safer country, increase Portugal's growth and secure the country's borders. Since Portugal's return to democracy in 1974, until 2019, the far right had never secured seats in the parliament. But now polls are giving Chega 15 to 20 percent of the vote. People are no longer ashamed of saying they vote for Chega. They had preconceived ideas that they should be embarrassed about voting for Chega. Every day since the start of the campaign, this leader canvasses with about a dozen Chega members. Among them is Antonio Campos. Fifty years after April 1974, we're fed up of being the last in Europe. We want growth. We want a future for our young people, for them to live in a more humane Portugal. Like its neighbour Spain, Portuguese voters once seemed immune to the far right. Now Chega has 12 members of parliament, and it could win more on Sunday. Ventura, Ventura, Ventura.